so we have another question here a motor is required to operate at a distance of 800 meters from its power supply the motor requires a potential difference that is 16 volts and current 0.6 amps to operate okay uh, that is something like someone saying you need to design a system such that you need to be able to deliver voltage of this much and a current of this much for the load to operate maybe it's a washing machine maybe it's a fan in this case it's a motor okay it happens when you are an electronic engineer or, a, or an electrical engineer right you are most likely to come up with these kind of practical problems try, try and design a system the resistance of each of these wires is this much okay okay they're asking what is the potential of the power supply itself okay so what is happening here is that some of the energy is lost in the wire as potential right because they have their resistance there is the resistance of these wires that is 0 0.005 ohms per meter there is no practical circuit or a wire with zero resistance right until unless we are talking about superconductors so there is a potential drop across these uh, across these wires as well before it gets delivered to the motor right that is something we need to account for and we have given a task such that we have to supply a voltage at our end so that 16 volts get delivered to the motor okay let's build a circuit trying to replicate this one the wires itself i'll represent as resistors okay one wire one resistor a second wire a second um, let's take this one as a motor another resistor back which goes back to the power supply okay this is my power supply and this is what's happening so this uh, this is wire one which you can see here it has a resistance so that's why i marked a, a resistor this is wire one this is wire two this is the motor resistance which i'll mark over here this is the motor motors resistor why am i writing alien words and this is wire two's resistors i have to find out what is the power supply that is the question mark okay so what is the resistor of the wire they are saying each wires have a resistor 0 0.0005 okay per meter how much meter it is 800 meter so 800 into 0 0.005 so let's bring out the calculator 800 4 ohms so wire 1 is also having 4 ohms wire 2 will also have 4 ohms but what is the resistance of the motor i have to design such that the motor should receive 16 volts the current in the motor should be 0.6 amps hence using ohm's law i can say v equals ir and i can calculate the resistance r equals v by i v by i voltage is given as 16 volts and the current is given to be 0 0.6 26.6667 it goes on ohms this is the resistance of the motor the current is 0 0.6 which i need to operate the motor and the current will be the same across all of these circuit setup because this is a series setup let me build the equivalent circuit of this one one single resistor and easily i can calculate what's the voltage this is the current 0.6 what is the equivalent resistor just need to add because they are in series this is nothing but 34.667 all right fantastic we have ohm's law v equals ir we know current 0.6 we know the resistance 34.667 now i can design my supply voltage that my final answer as 20.8 volts this is my power supply and you can see the answer as well so option d is the correct answer let's go to the next question all right so we have another question a particle as a charge plus two milli coulomb and is in a vertical uniform electric field okay vertical uniform electric field let's take two parallel plates and let's suppose this is a positive plate and this is a negative plate always the electric field gonna start on the positive and gonna end up on the negative uniform electric field the strength of this field is uniform at any point i choose doesn't matter it's, it's the same the field strength is the same and they are saying that the particle has a charge of this one particle and electric force on that charge acts upward on the particle okay let me choose a particle and keep it somewhere there and it carries a positive charge 
and is forced to move upwards it, if it goes upwards right then it is going along the field lines okay this setup is correct what if i would have chosen this to be positive and this to be negative and the electric fields would be emanating in this direction and if i were to choose a positive charge then it would be deflected downwards because we know that e equals f by q and the direction of force is the direction of electric field if this q is positive direction of field electric field and the direction of electric force are same if i only consider a positive charge if it is a negative charge then it's going to be reverse okay as you can see the force would have been acting downwards but not, that's not the case my setup is correct all right so how do we calculate the strength we know charge we know the force e equals what's the force 1 into 10 raised to minus 2 divided by positive 2 2 into 10 raised to minus 3 10 raised to 3 goes up and it's going to become positive 1 by 2 is nothing but 0 0.5 0 0.5 into 10 raised to plus 1 5 volts per meter because everything i took it and si units okay and it's acting upwards and that is the correct answer as well option d all right so we have another question here uh, two positive charges and one negative charge all of equal magnitude are set at the corner of an equilateral triangle which diagram best describes the electric field surrounding the charge okay we know that the electric field is radially outwards for a positive charge radially going outwards and for a negative charge it's radially inwards uh, let's look at option a okay positive charge all of these all of these fields are going outwards fine this one is going outwards this is also fine for a negative charge it's trying to come inwards this is fine option a seems good but what about option b mm, seems to go outwards uh, from this positive charge seems to go outwards from this positive charge seems to enter into this negative charge but option b could be right right but can you see here these field lines are trying to interact with each other they are going they are going and colliding with each other that's not possible they have to be deflecting like how it's here okay so option b is ruled out option c anyway it's kind of it's totally wrong it seems like as though uh, the electric field is revolving around the electrons and protons and same it goes for d as well option a is the right one okay we have another one here the batteries have negligible internal resistance what are the values of current in i1 i2 i3 so one thing is that we cannot apply any series or parallel combination over here because there are two power sources okay power supply there are two power supply so most possibly you cannot think uh, of trying to combine them and create a series circuit or a parallel circuit okay so you have to approach in another way using KCL. What do we know about KCL? Let's suppose I have a point and I have wires coming into this junction, right? Let's suppose two currents are coming in and one current is going out. Okay. This is always true for KCL. Let's suppose three currents are trying to come in. Okay. This is a wrong concept. Okay, even if even though if they are trying to come in, right? One in one of them will be the negative current. Okay. Maybe two of them will get a positive. Maybe one of them will get positive and two will be going out with a negative sign. Okay. Anything can happen. Okay. Maybe one entering and two exiting. Okay. This is true for KCL. At any point, if you choose any point, any node, okay. Current has to enter and current has to go out. Law of conservation of charges. Charges has to enter and they have to somehow go out. All right. So as you can see in this question, right? If I choose this point as my node, I3 and I1 are entering the node and I2 is exiting the node. So what do we know from KCL is that I2 should be equal to I3 plus I1. One can change that, right? So what does it say? What is it saying is that I, I2 should be greater than I3 and I1. From this options given below, can we see that which options makes I2 
greater than i1 and i3 uh, option a no i2 is less than i3 so we cannot use that what about b option b yes we have i2 greater than i3 and i1 can't we use b let's figure that out can you see that the power supply from where i1 is going i1 has 15 volts but all of the resistors are same and hence we can conclude that i1 has to be greater than i3 right so option b why what is happening is that they are showing that i3 is greater than i1 okay see you can solve this using kvl you have to go through all the loops create equation and all of this thing that that's not something which you are going to do for one marks so you have to do some trial and error and use some concepts as far as i know i have another conclusion right here i1 should be greater than i3 so i can come up with saying i2 is greater than i1 and i1 is greater than i3 uh, what about option c then option c i2 is greater than i1 yes it is greater uh, i1 greater than i3 yes it is greater so option c holds good and that is the answer that is given what about option d i2 should be greater than i1 is it like that i2 no i i1 is greater than i2 so that's not valid it all comes from the battery and the resistance and the concept of casey